Hey, my name is Marty Leeds, and today we're going to take a look at the astrological story of creation and its relationship to pi. Now, we know pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, and it's the number 3.141. And how we're going to understand this story is through English Gematria. Now here's the cipher we have for the English alphabet, and what we've done here is uh, split the alphabet A through M, and N through Z, or 13 letters each, and then we walked up the six days of creation, and we rested on the seven, which is the G and T there, and then we're just creating symmetry, we walk back down. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And of course we followed the motif that we found in, in Genesis in the Holy Bible. God made the world six days and rested on the seven, or the Sabbath, and that's exactly what we've done with our our alphabet here. Um, please take the time to write this cipher down as we're going to be using it all throughout the video and it'll be just handy to have on hand. Um, so what we're going to do actually right now, since we're dealing with the astrological story of creation, we're just going to look at the, at the term uh, astrology. And if we do the numerical equivalence of this, we find that it equals 34. And this number is going to be a, kind of a, a key number in understanding all of this. So, um, so yeah, let's let's get at it. We're going to look at the astrological story of creation. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is actually what we're going to do is correlate the birth of you. So the the you in the nine months that you're in your mother's womb. We're going to correlate that to the zodiac, the twelve ages of the zodiac. We're going to correlate that to the birth of all creation. So in the beginning, God said, let there be light. This is the Big Bang. This is the, you know, the breaking of the cosmic egg. There's a bunch of mythological motifs about the birth of creation. And then we're going to equate that to the birth of the sun. And so when the sun falls at, you know, midsummer, it falls down. It moves south on the horizon. It keeps moving south, keeps moving south. And then on December 21st, the solstice, it, it, it dies there. Instead, for three days, it stops moving south, one, two, three. And then, of course, on December 25th, that's the birth of the sun. And, of course, we see this, this sun god mythological motif in tons of mythologies. And so the whole idea is that we can correspond all of these seemingly different phenomenon and, and realize that they're just reflections of the same process, essentially. So the birth of you, the 12 ages of the zodiac, the birth of creation, and the birth of the sun are all talking about basically one process. We can do this because of the, cor the, the principle of correspondence. And I'm reading from the Emerald Tablet of Hermes, the Kabai on here. Um, it says the principle of correspondence is we all know it as as above, so below, as below, uh, so above. Uh, this principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomenon of the various planes of being and life. Um, the old Hermetic axiom ran in these words, as above, so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secret of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, but when we apply the principle of correspondence, and this is what's important, to them we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. Um, the ancient Hermeticists considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from the view of the unknown. Its use, its use even tore aside the veil of Isis, and we're going to see this veil of Isis, uh, to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught. And so the ancient hermeticists, alchemists, were basically saying that correlating one process to another is the way to unearth the, the true nature, if you will, of creation. And so that's what we're going to try to do today here. So... Um, in order to understand this, we're, we're going to go over the birth of the sun. Most people know that. We're going to go over the birth of creation. Most people understand the zodiac. But what a lot of people don't understand is human genetics. And so this, what we're going to do is just take a quick look at this um, embryonic egg that created you. Um, at a certain time in, in, your, in the, the, the month or the month, if you will, of the mother, an egg drops. And this is the embryo. It's the egg of creation. Now, inside this egg is what's known as chromosomes. And chroma means light. So you have a chroma, chromosome. It chroma means light. So it's basically saying some light was inside that. Now, what those chromosomes, there are 22 autosomes. And then there's one sex chromosome. And that sex chromosome is, is uh, designated by the characters XY and XX. And so you have a total of 23 of this some light inside this egg of creation. 
So you have 23 chromosomes inside that egg of creation before that father's sperm comes and cracks that egg. Now when that father does, when that sperm cracks that egg, cracks the egg there, what happens is the father's sperm um, or the father's genetics merges with the mother's genetics and then we have two sets of this 23, so we have 46. And so we have a total of 46 chromosomes that create a human being. So this number is going to be important. Why is the 23 important, that initial 23? Because heaven in our cipher actually equals 23. 651551 equals 23. So the kingdom of heaven resides in you is actually talking about the genetics of human beings. First off, 23, what, what is the genetics of human beings? Well, it's occulted, it's hidden. Occult equals 23. Natural, temple, beauty, death. Uh, Vatican, you know, circle, all of these things equal 23. And they're all referring to that initial egg of creation inside your mother's womb that created you. And so what we're going to do is equate this egg of creation to the egg of all creation. We can actually see these numbers here, the 22 autosomes and the one sex chromosome, because this is one chromosome, it's together. We can actually see this in the Garden of Eden. We have uh, Adam and Eve. We do the numerical equivalence for Adam, it's 7, and we do them for Eve, and it's 15. 7 plus 15, or Adam plus Eve, equals 22. And that's recognized by the 22 autosomes. We're missing one sex chromosome, though. That sex chromosome is also designated by Adam and Eve. Adam is, of course, the XY, or the male chromosome, and Eve is the female chromosome, making one. So Adam and Eve are recognized by the 23 chromosomes. 22 autosomes and the one sex chromosome. And that's Adam and Eve. And of course, what casted, or what cast Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, but a, a sperm, a snake. that even looks like a snake. Um, and so that's, you know, that's one way to understand the mythology of what, what's happening in the Garden of Eden. It's actually talking about human genetics. And we're going to get into all this. So, um, but just so everybody has a kind of a firm gra 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 uh, grasp on this, we're talking about the egg of creation. You know, from from your from your mother's womb drops that egg. We have 22 autosomes in there, one sex chromosome. We see that in Adam and Eve. We we see it's talking about heaven, and then we have this number 46. Once that sperm gets in to that egg, the these double, and so we have 46. So 46 is going to be an important number. So. Um, so now that we got that, let's um, let's take a look further at this beginning of creation and what this egg means. This is a reading from Genesis 1, 1 through 1, 6, actually. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So we're going to focus on these first three verses here. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Um, heaven was known as a circle by the sacred geometers, and earth was known as a four, as a square. So God created the heaven and the earth. But then it says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So God created something. In fact, God created the first thing, Genesis 1-1, God created the heaven and the earth. But then it goes on to say that it was void and formless and darkness was on the face of the deep. So what's going on here? If God created something, but yet it had no form and it was void, what did God create? God created the potential, the possibility. He created the archetype. Of form, the archetype, the potential, the possibility of a heaven and earth being in existence. So nothing was actually created yet. We're talking about a darkness, we're talking about a deep, we're talking about a no thing. We're talking about nothing except possibility and potential. Now what we can do is actually geometrically or symbolically um, equate all of this, this first couple verses of Genesis, to a geometric symbol, and that symbol is the zero. And that zero is a circle. 
and we know that that circle, if we do the numerology of this, actually equals 23. And that's the same as heaven. And so we know that things of that have form and things that have structure, um, the things of the material world are on earth. But there is no form or anything like that in heaven because it's it's not material. So we can actually correlate this for these first couple of verses to the zero. Why can we correlate the zero or a zero circle? Why can we use this as a geometric symbol to symbolize this, these first verses? Because the zero encapsulates the most amount of space with the least amount of effort. And so basically when you draw a circle, if you take the length of the string, you draw a square, you draw a you know, a triangle, you draw a rectangle, whatever, you draw any sort of polygon. If you if you if you take this circle, I mean if you take this line and make it a circle, it's gonna encapsulate the most amount of space. And so this is the idea, this is a geometric form of saying basically infinity. As far out as you can possibly think, as far out as we can possibly go, there has to be a limit to it. And that's what the circle symbolizes. A circle, this is also zero, and so therefore it's no thing. It's nothing. It's none. And so this is what the circle represents. This is what that zero represents. The first thing in creation is the first thing in our number line. Now, when we, what we can do is so take a look at that darkness and the deep and before the creation, God created the heaven and the earth, but it was formless and void. And we're going we're gonna to symbolize that as nothing, as no thing, as none. Now, we can actually look at this same motif in Egypt as well. In Egypt, they had the idea that from the waters, the eternal waters, the maternal waters of creation, sprang forth a lotus flower. And these eternal waters of creation were literally called a nun. And this is a reference to the Catholic nun. Because what is a Catholic nun? It's a, it's a woman, and so she is representative of the this cosmic mother figure, this maternal mother figure of all creation, and she wears black. And so it's recognizing, this Catholic nun is recognized in the Egyptian myth of the waters of creation being nun or nun or none, none, none. It's talking about nothing. And this motherly figure gave birth to all creation. Now, in the in the Egyptian myth, they say that the waters of none, waters of none, what sprang forth but a lotus flower. And it's a terribly drawn lotus flower, but you get the idea. So, from the waters of nothing in the Egyptian mythology sprang a lotus flower. We do the numerology of the lotus flower, it wants to tell you about two things. Same thing that the Bible wants to tell us about. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, but the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. He created heaven and earth. Heaven we know is 23, and earth equals 24. So what mythology do you want to use? Do you want to use the Bible saying that sprang forth from the waters of nothing, this dark, this void, this, this face of the deep where spirit, the spirit of God moved over the waters, gave birth to heaven and earth? Or do you want to go to the Egyptian one and say from the waters, the maternal waters of nothing, of no thing, of none, sprang forth a lotus flower? What is it? It doesn't matter. You're talking about essentially the same thing. Two different mythologies to talk about the same thing. Why did the lotus flower, why is a lotus flower springing forth from the waters of none? Because... Um, a lotus flower, like in a, in a lake, when in the morning, when it blooms, it basically it blooms from under the water. And so it comes up and, and springs forth this lotus flower. And so it's the idea of self-generation. And this is actually the idea of a virgin birth as well. Because the, the whole idea of a virgin birth is that the, the mother gives by deific means. The mother gives birth to all of creation. Because nothing, nothing could come from outside the no thing to impregnate that first egg of creation. It had to come from within. And this is the idea of a virgin birth. And we're going to get into that. We're going to see that on the zodiac itself. So, um, so hopefully everybody gets all that. Um, what we're going to do is actually look at further of this concept of heaven and earth or lotus flower. 
um, heaven, earth, lotus, flower, 23, 24. What else? Emerald. We're reading from the Emerald Tablet. Uh, emerald Tablet. Emerald equals 23. Tablet equals 24. Uh, Buddha. Gotama. Buddha equals 23. Gotama equals 24. Um, and this is an interesting one. Bohemian equals 23. And Grove equals 24. So just some in interesting correlations there. Now, what we're going to do is actually focus on, um, we're actually going to do the numerical equivalents of 23 and 24. So we did the numerical equivalents of 23. And we can find out that 23 wants to tell us about the number 54. And uh, 24, or earth flower tablet Gotama Grove, wants to tell us about 45. And so we have a mirror going on here, as you can see. What's the mirror of 54? It's 45. What's the mirror of 45? It's 54. They're mirrors. They're reflections of each other. And that's exactly what heaven and earth is. Earth is a reflection of heaven. Heaven is a reflection of earth. That which is in the stars is also on the earth. That which is on the earth is also in the stars. Talk about the same thing. It's saying that whatever is above, law of correspondence is below. Whatever's up here is below. Whatever's up here is below. They're reflections of each other. And they're one, they're unified. And so we see this, we do the numerology for the words 23 and 24, and that's exactly what it tells us about. And so these two numbers become very important. We know that there's 24 hours on an earth day, and we know that inside in that initial womb of creation, that initial egg of creation has 23 chromosomes. And so that becomes pretty important. Now, we're actually going to focus on this 54 and 45, but just one thing really quick here, we have um, earth in heaven. 46 plus 47 plus 48 plus 49 plus 50 plus 51 plus 52 plus 53 actually equals 396. Why is this number important? Well, we're going to see the power of this 396 in just a second, but the radius of the earth is 3,960 miles. And we're also going to see this very important radius um, as we, when we move on. So, um, but so yeah, the numbers between Earth and Heaven, we add them up. It tells us about this power of three, nine, and six. We're going to look at that in just a second, and then we multiply it by basically the ten fingers of our hands, and we find that it's the radius of the Earth. So, so fifty-four and forty-five. Hopefully everybody gets that. I'm just going to write it again here. We did the numerology for the words 50, or, uh, 23 and 24, and it tells us about two numbers, 54 and 45. We add these, the numbers between them up, and it tells us about 396. Why is this important? In Vedic math, um, what you would do is draw numbers around a number dial. So basically you make that circle of creation, if you will, the egg of creation, and then you would put nine numbers around this number dial. And this actually gives us our base 10 system. Counting zero as a digit, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten numbers. You can look at it like this. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So why are these our 10 digits? Why are these our base 10 system? Why is this our base 10 system? And this is important because any, you can reduce any number down to any number between 1 and, one and 9. So for instance, let's take the number 361. 3 plus 6 plus 1 is 10, and 1 plus 0 is 1. So therefore, 361 can be reduced down to 1. And you can do this with any number into infinity. doesn't matter how large or complex that number, you can always break it down to 1 through 9. And then we have that placeholder of the 0, giving us 10 digits. This is 
this one through nine was known as the Ennead by the Greeks and the Egyptians. And it was basically nine gods who um, regulated the laws of nature through the, through the laws of number. Basically, it worked its magic through the magic of our manifestation through the principles of one through nine. And then we had that godly zero. And that encapsulated the most amount of space and was no thing, all or nothing. So we have, and we see this right on our number dial. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, giving us 10 digits. Now in the, um, well, first off, let me say this. Zero plus one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine equals 45. Or our Earth. So we saw Earth was nothing more than a reflection of Heaven. Heaven was nothing more than a reflection of Earth. We counted the numbers between there, and they were in the numbers 3, 9, 6. So 3, 9, and 6 are actually pretty important, and we can see this just actually creates our Holy Trinity. Now, in the Egyptian myth, it says, The Pharaoh came forth between the thighs of the Divine Nine. The Pharaoh came forth between the thighs of the Divine Nine. Well, we can see, what are the thighs of the Divine Nine? All we have to do is find our di diameter to find the circumference of pi, and what we did is just cracked pi there. We just went and we cracked pi. So here's our thighs. So we can look at it from Earth, saying 45, or we can look at it from Heaven, saying 54. Interesting, 9 divided by 2 is nothing more than 4.5. And so the idea that in Egypt it says the Pharaoh came forth between the thighs of the divine nine. Well, here's our divine nine and the Pharaoh came forth. Pharaoh in our cipher actually equals 24. And that wants to tell us about the, uh, the, the mirror of heaven and earth, actually. So, um, and so what we're going to see is that this Pharaoh that came forth between the thighs of the divine nine, first off, the Pharaoh, this nine, this divine nine, has always been known as a serpent. And so it's basically the idea that the serpent sperm went and cracked the egg of creation, and it even told us where it cracked it. And so what we're going to do is actually refer to this as that egg, that egg of creation and the cracking of pie. So what we're going to do right now is actually focus, since we're talking about the birth of creation, we're going to correlate that to the zodiac. What we're going to do is actually just look at the 12 ages of our zodiac. And these are the traditional ages that have been used for quite a long time. This is actually the hermetic uh, breakdown, uh, has always used the 12 ages. So, um, And that's the ones we know today, so that's what we're going to focus on. So, um, so what we've done here is actually, what we're going to do is actually do the numerology for all the names and then find its total. So, and I'm not gonna do all this here. You can actually see um, this in my book. I've got this all written out, uh, Pi in the English Alphabet, Volume 1, where you can take a look at it. But um, basically what we do here is um, Aquarius, for instance, we know equals 34. And so we have Aquarius here equal to 34. Um, Pisces, you know, we can do the numerology for this and it equals 28, um, and etc. So we're just going to go over this real quick here. Um, one, one thing to note, a quick, astrology, if you remember, equaled 34. And so we see it, we have a direct connection to astrology and Aquarius. So there must be something important about the constellation or the house of Aquarius. So we're going to see why in just a second here. So. Aquarius equals 34, Pisces equals 28, Aries equals 22, Taurus equals 31, Gemini equals 24, Cancer equals 18, Leo equals 9, Virgo equals 24, Libra equals 15, Scorpio equals 26, Sagittarius equals 56, and Capricorn equals 28. We add these up, it's 315. And we're going to see this um, in just a second, why this 315 is important. But the first thing I want to, I want to look at is um, if it if you notice that 34 of Aquarius was important. And right across from Aquarius is the constellation Leo. Um, and we do the numerology for Leo and it wants to tell us about nine. Now, um, we're going to do this in just a second, but if you notice, there's all the constellations here 
are double digits. Double digit, double digit, double digit, double digit, etc., etc., except Leo. Leo is the only one that doesn't, that uh, isn't beyond the base 10, if you will. And we're going to break this down. But so there's something that seems, you know, important about Leo there. And Leo is right across from Aquarius. And then astrology equaled 34. So what's going on? If you notice, Leo looks like this. That's, that's the symbol for Leo. The symbol for Aquarius is this. It's water. Now, Aquarius is actually an air sign, but, you know, the symbol is water here. You know, if you, if you understand this correctly, what is this? What is this Aquarius? It's the waters of none. And what is, what's happening here to this? This actually kind of looks like this. Um, what's happening with Leo here? Well, in one way, the sperm is leaving the egg. A serpent or a sperm is leaving the egg of creation in the waters of none. Hopefully you, you can kind of get that, but it's the whole idea of the virgin birth. What, you know, what cast Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden? The serpent. You look at in Ohio, the serpent mound. It's the whole idea of the serpent is the one that actually could, could tempt Adam and Eve, those opposites, the duality within all creation. This is Shiva Shakti, yin yang, Adam Eve, positive and negative. It's the only thing that could tempt them from cracking that egg of creation. Where was that egg of creation? It was in the eternal, maternal waters of none. And so this is one way of, of understanding why Leo is a, is a cross from Aquarius and how, what it has to do with human genetics. Now, what we're going to do is actually look at this 315. So we added up all 12 ages of our zodiac and it told us about 315. 315 on a clock is at 3 and 3. And this is 3.15 on a clock. And this is exactly due east. This is where the sunrise is. And what we're, de what we're dealing with is the birth of you, the birth of all creation, and the birth of the sun. Um, and so the birth, we, we noticed that the birth of the sun was here. This is December, well, 20, it's the solstice, so it's December 21st. But then 25th is the rise of the sun. That's the Christmas. It's the mass of Christ. And then we have the 315 due east there. And this is what the Zodiac wants to tell us about. Now, why, why is this 315 important? Um, first off, it's that radius. It's the radius or the radius or the rays of the sun from the sun god Ra. This is a radius. But what's what's even more important is that we can actually do the numerology for the words 315. And we add this up and it actually tells us about 63. Why is 63 important? Um, the 33rd, remember this is... 3.15 on a clock. So everybody got this. We add the ages of the zodiac and it's 3.15. It's going to give me some room here. So this equals 3.15. We're correlating that to 3.15 on a clock. That's telling us about due east. 3.15, doing the numerology of the words, actually equals 63. Why is this important? Because it's pointed at 3, 3. The 33rd degree of Freemasonry was called the Inspector General. Do the numerology for this. It's 37 and General actually equals 26, which adds up to 63. So the 33rd degree of Freemasonry we find in the Zodiac and talk, tells us about Inspector General equaling 63. Letters equals 37 and numbers equals 26. And this equals letters, numbers, letters, numbers, 63. So, um, so we see that 315, we did the numerology for 315, it told us about 63, that 33 wanted to tell us about the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, Inspector General, and it also wanted to tell us about letters and numbers. And so all of this information is encoded in within the stars of our sky. 
Um, why else is this important? Why is this 63 important? If you do the numerology for um, the 12 ages of our zodiac, once again, Aquarius equals 34. So we're going to use decimal parity on this. Let's write this out again. Aquarius equals 34. 3 plus 4 is 7. Pisces equals 28. 2 plus 8 is 1, and 1 plus 0 is 1. Aries equals 22. 2 plus 2 is 4. Taurus equals 31. 3 plus 1 is 4. Gemini is 24. 2 plus 4 is 6. Cancer is 18. 1 plus 8 is 9. Leo is 9, we know. We don't have to reduce that down at all. It's what makes it extra special. Um, Virgo is 24, 2 plus 4 is 6. Libra is 15, 1 plus 5 is 6. Scorpio is 26, 2 plus 6 is 8. Sagittarius is 56, 5 plus 6 is 11, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Capricorn is 28, 2 plus 8 is 1, or 2 plus 8 is 10, and 1 plus 0 is 1. 7 plus 1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9 plus 6 plus 6 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1 equals 63. So what we're going to do is actually look at the three phases of astrology. And we're just going to kind of pick out three houses here. It doesn't really matter which ones. but um, And we're going to, the, the three phases are called cardinal, fixed, and mutable. And once again, I, like I said, I have this uh, all in my book here. You can look, I go through the whole uh, case for astrology, and then I actually uh, correlate the Temple of Man as well. So you can get all this information in the book if you'd like. Um, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. These are the three phases that the houses go through. Um, and cardinal, and here we can even read just a description of the three phases here. Let's read this right from my book. Um, there are three modes or qualities that are used in astrology, termed cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Cardinal signs are energetic and dynamic. Fixed signs have persistence, perseverance, and stability, while mutable signs are flexible and adaptable. These three qualities represent the movement and space of the rising and falling of a singular turn on the great wheel in the sky. And so these three phases represent basically the evolutionary movement of those houses of the zodiac. So um, we can do the numerology for, for all of our... Um, phases here. Cardinal equals 22, fixed equals 23, and then mutable equals 24. Right in succession, 22, 23, and 24. Now why is this important? Because this equals 69. Um, and these three phases actually correlate to the three phases of alchemy. In alchemical transformation, there was the negredo, which was the blackness, black of ignorance, the darkness, um, the albedo, which was the purity of spirit, is the whiteness, albedo means white, and then the rubedo, and rubedo means red, it means the passion, the blood, the passion for life. Um, negredo, we can do the numerology for all these. We can find that adding the negredo to the albedo to the rubedo actually equals 69 as well. So direct correlation between the three phases of astrology and the three phases of alchemy by the numerology. Why is 69 important? We know that the, can, uh, the, the sign for cancer actually is a 6 and a 9. Um, and it's just, you know, he's perching upright. Um, and so why, why is this important? Why is the 69 important? Because if you, um, has everybody got this? This equals 69. This equals 69. Cancer tells us about 69. If we start at, once again, 315 on a the clock. There's our zodiac again. The 315, we correlated to that radius right there. This is the equator. This is where the sun rises, right? Well, what, what we can do is actually understand that when you, um, for every one degree that you sail, you have to move 69 miles upon the, this is the equatorial circumference of the Earth, 
so just the circumference at the equator, and then we're going to take a ship and we're going to move up. And when you do that, it, one degree is every 69 miles. This is very, very close. It, it actually, because, because there's an equatorial bulge and because the the um, the planet is actually it's actually kind of smooshed or flattened at the poles it's it's very close it's approximate it's like sometimes it's 68.7 etc but it's roughly 69 and so we see this number in the cardinal fix and mutable signs we see it in the the three phases of alchemy and then we see it in cancer this is where cancer is that's 69 it's the top it's summer if we're looking you know northeast west south of course and so you know, whoever created these the signs for the zodiac, the the you know the names for cardinal fixed and mutable, and then the three phases of astrology, absolutely knew about how to navigate the oceans and how to really they understood perfectly the geodesy of the Earth, and so that's what the three phases of astrology want to tell you about. So what we're going to do actually is take a look at the solar system quick. And um, what we're going to do is actually put the numbers, of course, to each of the planets of our solar system, and then add it up, and then you know see what it see what it see where it takes us basically. Um, and first thing we're going to do is address the fact that we're using Pluto here. Now Pluto has been denigrated to by uh, modern science that says it's not a planet, but we're going to include it here just for t two specific reasons. Number one, this is the solar system. It's it's all the heavenly bodies that revolve around the sun. The soul is, of course, the sun. Um, and Pluto does revolve around the sun. There's no doubt it's part of the solar system. It's in the peripheries, but we're, we're still going to include it here. The other reason that we're going to include it here is because when we do this, it actually um, it actually creates our Ennead. Um, we have our sun in the center there, and that's our zero, and they have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And that's our base 10 system. That's what we found on our hands. And so this is why we're going to focus on these nine planets and the sun in the center. Now, what we can do is actually do the numerology for this. So sun is 661. So sun equals 13. 6 plus 6 plus 1 is 13. Mercury is 1553652. This equals 27. And you can pause the video and double check all this if you'd like. I've got it. I've got it in the next volume of my book, uh, Pi in the English Alphabet, Volume Two. And then I have a whole video called uh, the Solar System. You can check out and where I show all this. So, uh, Venus equals 23. Earth equals 24. Mars equals uh, 13. Jupiter equals 35. Saturn equals 26. Uranus equals 25. Uh, Neptune equals 28, and then Pluto equals 20. Uh, 13 plus 27 plus 23 plus 24 plus 13 plus 35 plus 26 plus 25 plus 28 plus 20 actually gives us the number 234. Now, why, why is this number important? We're going to see why this number is important. First thing we can do is actually just mirror 234. Once again, we're talking about the mirror of heaven and earth, and we found that in our numbers. The mirror of 45 was 54. So everything in nature is mirrored. Your hands are mirrored, your body's mirrored, a leaf is mirrored, the, you know, the, the earth is mirrored, your brain, the hemispheres of your brain are mirrored, everything in nature is mirrored. And this, and this is what heaven and earth wanted to tell us about. Um, 234, the mirror of 234 is 432. Why is 432 important? Because, once again, we're dealing with that radius, the radius of the sun is 432,000 miles. And so we see that in our solar system, in the sun system. Um, why, else is, why else is 432 important? Um, there's a big movement right now trying to go back to 432 hertz, which is basically the resonance of nature herself. That nature tends to resonate in 432, 432 hertz. Um, right now, we're basically tuned to 440 so the whole idea is to try to get back to this because this is the this is what nature tells us about really like the Stradivarius violin was uh, created was built to be played and tuned to 432 hertz there's like 432 Buddha statues on Mount Miru we see this number again and again it was heralded by the Egyptians and then we see that in the Sun itself in the radius of the Sun um, why else is this 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 for this uh, 234 mirroring 432 234 plus 432 is 666. Six, six. So we just mirrored 234 to 432. We added them up. It's that beastly number 666. Six, six. Why is this important? Because St. John's Revelation is um, 1318 is actually where we find the verse of, of uh, this, this. Here is wisdom. 
Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for is for it is a number of man, and his number is 666. So that verse, where we hear of the number 666 is actually 1318 in the Bible. 13 times 18 is 234. And that's our solar system. And this number is going to come up again. Now the question is, when the Bible was written, did they even know about Neptune or Pluto, etc.? Pluto wasn't even named till 1950. I just mentioned that. So how could it possibly be incorporated into the, the Holy Bible, the numerology of the Holy Bible? Well, what does the Holy Bible say? That there's a God. That just quite possibly there's something bigger at work here. And we actually see this in, in St. John's Revelation. So we multiplied the verse 13 times 18, the verse of 66, and it told us about the 234 of our solar system. And so uh, let's let's see where else we can find this number 234. So what we're going to do is actually look at the four elements that are assigned to the 12 ages of the zodiac. And those elements are earth, air, water, and fire. So for instance, Capricorn is an earth sign. Aquarius is an air sign. Uh, Pisces is a water sign. Uh, Aries is a, is a fire sign. Earth, air, water, fire. Earth, air, water, fire. These four elements... Um, are actually, it's the same thing as in, in modern science. Modern science that basically says that matter goes through phases of substantiation. There are phases that matter goes through. This is solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Our ancient ancestors said the exact same thing. They just had different terms for it. It's as simple as that. Solid is earth. Liquid is, of course, water. Gas is air. And plasma is fire. This is what modern science says. This is the substantiation of matter, the phases that matter goes through, and our ancient ancestors just had different words for it. Now, when we add up these, um, so Earth we know is 24. We do the numerology of air, it equals 11. Look at water, it's 22. And fire is 21. If we add these up, it's actually 78. So the four alchemical elements, substantiation of matter, we add them up, it equals 78. Why is this important? Well, the, uh, the tarot deck has 78 cards in the major and minor arcana of the tarot deck. Um, and I actually go through the major arcana in, in, a, in a video called the tarot deck that you can check out. So there's 78 cards in the tarot deck. We find that four, four uh, alchemical elements want to tell us about 78. We can actually find this 78 um, on your fingers as well. And this is, this is referencing the 12 ages of our zodiac. We can find this right on our fingers. So uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 actually equals 78. And then this is a reference to the 12 ages of the zodiac. Um, notice we have three ages per quadrant. And then there's, of course, four quadrants. And you actually see this. So you can actually see this is uh, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, uh, uh, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and, and Sagittarius. And those are right on your four fingers there. So you add 1 through 12, it equals 78. Well, we actually find this in our four alchemical elements as well. So your four fingers actually represent the earth, air, water, and fire as well that add to 78. So fire, water, or, or air, and earth right on your four fingers. Why else is this important? Um, so we added 1 through 12, we looked at the four alchemical elements, uh, 1.618. This is the golden mean, the golden ratio, the golden proportion. It's the golden number. It's the balancing point. Mean is a balancing point. This is called the golden mean. It's the balancing point of all nature. Um, you find this in everywhere. You, you find it in uh, flowers, trees. It's on the human body. If you do the numerology for one point, just as you would say it, 6, 1, Eight, and you can pause the video and double check this yourself if you'd like. It actually equals 78. And so really all of that, everything that's in the sky, 12 ages of the zodiac around your fingers. So we added the 1 through 12, 12 ages of the zodiac that's on your fingers. We found the four alchemical elements that are on your fingers, equaling 78. And then we find the ratio that you grow into that's on your hand, all equals 78. 78, 78, 78. And this is what the tarot deck wants to tell you about. It's basically saying that everything that's above is so below. It's right on your hands. The substantiation of matter that created you, 1.618 that created you. 
the creation. You were you were made from stardust. And that's what this is referencing. Stars. It's all telling you about essentially you. Now, why why is this important? This seventy eight important. Um, so we have four elements equaling seventy eight. We have the tarot deck equaling seventy eight. We have one point six one eight equaling seventy eight. Why is this important? So we have one two three or what? Or, oh, this one set of alchemical elements here. Earth, air, water, and fire. Earth, air, water, and fire. And earth, air, water, and fire. It's 12 divided by 3. And that's, or, um, yes, 12 divided by 4 elements. Equaling 3 sets of those elements. The mighty trinity. 12 ages of the zodiac, 4 sets of elements. We know that equals 78. And so 78 times 3 actually equals 234. And this is our solar system. This is the number that we find in that um, 1318 of, of Revelation. 13 times 18 equals 234. So we have four alchemical elements. 78 plus 78 plus 78 equals 234. And we found that, that number in our solar system, and we found it in St. John's Revelation. And so, um, and so we can see that, um, however the however the astrology astrology of creation unfolded throughout time, it was working off the archetype of number. And so we can start to understand um, things like the four alchemical elements and how it relates to you by understanding number. So, and so this number two thirty four, whose mirror is four thirty two, when combined equals that beastly number six six six. This number 666 is very important. And, and St. John's Revelation tells us about this because it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of man. And his number is 666. So 666 actually encodes essentially all of this stuff in one way, if you know how to read it, because it's a, it's a number of wisdom. So we are. We saw. We did the twelve ages of the zodiac. Um, we saw. We saw the three phases of astrology. How they correlated to alchemy. We saw the four. We we took a look at the whole solar system, and then we also saw the four alchemical elements and how that deals with you um, and on the zodiac and etc. What we're going to do right now is actually focus on this ninety degree arc here in the zodiac. So here's our twelve ages of the zodiac, and we're going to focus on this ninety degrees, and that's Pisces, Aquarius, and Capricorn. Um, each each degree is is 30 degrees. 30 times 12 is 360 degrees in a circle. Why are we focused on these three? Is the question. Because what we're doing is correlating the birth of the sun to the birth of you to the birth of all creation to the zodiac. This 90 degrees. So when the sun the sun rises in Aries, and then it courses its way through the sky and falls crosses the equator here and falls during fall and goes all the way down into winter and this is December 21st where the sun dies on the cross, it's dead for three days and then it rises again. And so when it rises, this is the this is the you know the birth of the sun, but it has to go through all of this dark area. It has to climb up the holy mountain, if you will, climb out of the waters of creation. This is what we're going to consider the waters of creation, and then it goes through the equator into Aries to to make the first sunrise. And we're going to correlate that first sunrise to the to the birth of you, the birth of the sun to the birth of you. And so this, this section here, this 90 degrees, we're going to call the waters of creation. We're going to call it that nun. Why are we calling it that nun? Because, well, Aquarius equaled 34, and we know astrology equaled 34. And so there was something particularly interesting about um, the Aquarian constellation. Um, once again, let me just do the numerology here quick. Equals 34. So there's something particular about that. I mean, she is, Aquarius is the water bearer. She's pouring the waters forth on creation. So... So this 90 degree arc is what we're going to be focused on here. And so and then to the to the birth of the sunrise. Now why why this 90 degree arc? Well, it's another reason. Um, Pisces plus Aquarius plus Capricorn actually equals 90. And so we can correlate these three constellations to this 90 degree 
90 degree arc here. It's 90 degree swing. And this is the only three constellations that will actually do this in, in, in all 12 ages of the zodiac. So it stands to reason that there's something pretty important about that. So we know that the death of the sun here, the rebirth of the sun on December 25th, and then we're going to cross that equator, and then this is going to be the sunrise, and this is going to be our waters of creation. Now, we know that in human genetics, what was in the waters of creation, but the, the two opposites, the eternal opposites, the Shiva Shakti, the Adam and Eve, um, the yin yang, etc., etc. Once again, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn equals 90. We're equating this to the 90 degree arc here. Um, if you notice, we'll have to account for those to Adam and Eve inside the waters of creation, inside the womb of creation. And if you notice, you have 28 phalanges on your hands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 14 times 2 is 28. So um, the 20th phalanges of your hands are actually recognized in Capricorn and Pisces. So we can actually look at, this is the hands of Adam and the hands of Eve, or the sex chromosome inside the egg or the sphere of creation. Now, um, and so this is, we could say this is, you know, positive and negative. This is odd. Adam is the odd numbers. Eve is the even numbers. Um, you know, there's different ways to look at this. And so the whole idea is that um, the, essentially this is a virgin birth. And we know that, you know, right before the, the Aries, the birth of the sun here, this is Pisces. And then this is where the sun crosses. And this is the first sunrise in creation right across from this is Virgo. And this is the idea of the virgin birth. Um, and that's right in the constellation, of course, um, or excuse me, in the zodiac. So now what we can actually do is we see that Adam and Eve, the hands of Adam and the hands of Eve are in, uh, in this waters of creation. 28 in our cipher we do the numerology for it, it actually equals um, 20 equals 26 and 8 equals 30. And so this is nothing more than the mother and the father. We're going to see this uh, mother again here because we're dealing with the, the cosmic mother of creation, a maternal, a supernal mother. Um, and mother equals 26 and father equals 30. And that's exactly what we see in the words 28. Um, 26 plus 30 equals 56. And that's nothing more than two 28s. And so basically, this idea here, so hopefully everybody gets this. We did the numerology of the 28 phalanges of your hands. We see that in Pisces and, and, and Capricorn, 28 and 28. Hands of Adam, hands of Eve. We did the numerology for the word 28. It told us about a mother and a father. Two opposites, yin-yang, Shiva Shakti, positive and negative. Adam and Eve, same things. Um, and then we did the 26 plus 30 equals 56, and that's the idea of um, there's a 28 and 28 within every man is a woman, with every woman is a man. We actually see this in the sex chromosome. The sex chromosome is one, but it has both features, Adam and Eve, man, woman, inside that sex chromosome. And then that sex chromosome actually doubles. So, hands of Adam, hands of Eve, inside the number 28, inside this number. Why is this important? Because when, when the sperm comes and cracks the egg, um, the egg of creation, what, what happens is in for like, I think it's like seven weeks, roughly around seven weeks, that when this, this egg starts to form you, it actually does a doubling pattern, we'll get into this, um, the first seven weeks, you're neither a man nor a female, you're actually both. And so this is the idea. We actually see this in the 28. 28 phalanges of your hands, we do the numerology for it, and it tells you about the fact that there's a mother and father. There's an Adam and Eve. In, in Jungian psychology, this is called the anima and the animus. It's the idea that there's a man and female within every single person. We see this in alchemy as well. Alchemy is the same idea. Um, in alchemy, it's the merging of the sun and the moon. This is the man 
and the woman. It's the merging of that within the self. It's a psychological process. And it's recognizing that you are divided. Once again, here's that mirror that we're working with. Here's the human being. This side's the man. And this side's the woman. Yin Yang, Shiva Shakti, doesn't matter. What you're going to do is merge those two into the complete human being. This is the merging of heaven and earth. This is the merging of the sun and the moon, etc. We actually see this in human genetics and we see it in the stars in our sky. So, hopefully everybody gets that. This, this idea here is, um, this is, so we've, we've accounted for Capricorn and Pisces. And we're going to go over this all again, just so you know. Um, hands of Adam, hands of Eve. What about this Aquarius here? What about this 34? Well, we know the 34 equal astrology. But um, we can actually take the numbers of Aquarius. Um, so here's 1 times 4 times 6 times 1 times 5 times 5 times 6 times 6 actually equals 21,600. Why is this important? Um, the, let's do this. Once again, there's that 315 on our clock that our Zodiac wanted to tell us about. This is the equator where the sun rises. That's what we're dealing with here. If you actually, this is the equatorial circumference of the earth. On the equatorial circumference, this is actually, um, navigators, um, would actually navigate the earth by what, what is known as arc minutes. And the whole idea is there's 60 seconds in a minute, and then 60 minutes, or excuse me, 360 minutes total. So one degree, look at it this way, one degree has uh, 60 seconds, and that one degree is called a minute, and then of course there's 360 degrees or minutes. And 360, 360 times 60 is actually 21,600. So the arc minutes on the equatorial circumference that all navigators use, when they navigate, they actually use the stars in the sky. They use the zodiac. Those arc minutes are embedded in that 34 of Aquarius directly. Why else is this important? Because the human being breathes roughly 21,600 breaths in a single day. And so we can kind of see that time, space, astrology, numerology, the very words we speak are all relating to you. You're not separate from it. Um, why else is this? Now, we know that astrology equaled 34. Astro we'll just write this once again. Astrology equals 34. So there must be something extra special about this number 34. There is. We find this in the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is actually... Um, it encodes this holy 1.618. It's the golden ratio, the golden mean that we found on our hands and in the numerology. The, 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 the um, Fibonacci sequence starts with 0 and adds 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. And 21 plus 13 is 34. It's a Fibonacci number. It's also the, um, depending on how you term it, you can term the Fibonacci sequence in a couple different ways, but um, this is also the 10th number. Once again, there's those 10 fingers, the mighty 10, base 10 system. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's the 10th number. So the, all dealing with Aquarius, all dealing with astrology. Why else is this important? 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8 plus 13 plus 21 plus 34 is 88. There are 88 keys on a grand piano. Now, this is basically the, the range that human beings can hear at. It's a 7 and a third octaves. Um, and there's 88 keys there. You have 28 phalanges on your hands. So when you play a grand piano, you're dealing with two numbers. 88 keys and 28 phalanges. 88 divided by 28 is pi. It's 3.142. It's a close approximation of pi. So when you play the piano, you're basically making the music of the spheres, what you're doing. 
Um, why else is this 88 important? Once again, we added 0 through 34 it equals 88. Well, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with astrology. And there are 32 constellations in the northern hemisphere and 56 in the southern. And this equals 88. And so all of this is embedded basically in this one number, if you understand the number correctly and the numerology behind it. Um, and so, and all of this is embedded in the stars in our sky. So what we're going to be focused on is this 90 degree arc once again in the next, uh, the next couple uh, frames here. Um, and this 90 degree arc, once again, 28 of Capricorn, 34 of Aquarius and 28 of Pisces equals 90, and this is a 90 degree arc. And so this is this becomes very important. We have a perfect correlation between the numerology and then the actual um, arc and angles, the actual mathematics behind this. Now, this is the um, the birth of creation. Once again, this is that waters of none that's going to burst forth and give us that sunrise, the first sunrise of creation. This is 90 degrees. Now, what we can do is actually do the numerology for the words 90 degrees. And it will actually equal 58. Um, and why is this important that it equals 58? We're going to explore this. First off, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you first notice, in the the beginning. The, what did the first thing that this great deity, this great God did? It went into himself. And that's exactly what we're, we're talking about here. God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. It went into himself to create the potential, the archetype, the idea, the possibility of all of manifested creation. And then when God said, let there be light, it went and did all that. It went and created. It went and manifested itself. So in the beginning, that's what we're dealing with right now. In the beginning. We do the numerology for this, and you can bet that it equals 58 as well. So our 90 degree arc, God went into himself, into those waters of creation, that waters of none bursted forth. In the beginning, wants to tell us about 58 as well. 90 degrees equals 58. What was birthed? Well, the speed of light. And we do the numerology for this. And sure enough, it equals 58 as well. So the 90 degrees, that's going to give birth to the sun, which is, of course, the speed of light, and is in the beginning. And all of these things equal 58. Um, what, so now we, we understand that this 90 degree arc, 90 degrees equals 58. It's in the beginning, it equals 58. It also has the idea of Adam and Eve. It's the hands of Adam and the hands of Eve. So we should find this duality or this mother-father within the numerology. And we actually find that with 58. 65672, 50 equals 26, 80 equals 30. And we recognize that from the last, from this is nothing more than the mother equals 26, and the father equals 30. Once again, same thing. You have the, the eternal opposites, the yin-yang, the Adam and Eve, the Shiva Shakti, the positive and negative, the centripetal centrifugal forces, the inside this womb of creation. We can look at it as the hands of Adam, or we can do the numerology of it, and it tells us about a mother and father. Either way. Now, why is this number 58 also important? Because really what we're dealing with is the number 7 is, of course, one of the most holy numbers of all. 7 in our cipher equals 22, and 22 divided by 7 is pi. It's 3.142. So seven is very important. Seven days of creation, seven chakras, um, seven days of the week, seven notes of the major scale, seven colors of the rainbow, etc., etc., etc. Seven is seen time and time again, and we see that seven encodes pi. 
So what we're going to deal with is the first seven prime numbers. Since we're dealing with God going into himself, into the waters of creation, basically um, creating the architecture of creation in his mind, in her mind, and then giving birth to that architecture is the idea. So we're going to deal with the first seven prime numbers. Um, any architect will tell you that has to deal with mathematics in order to mathematics and geometry in order in order to do architecture, of course. First seven prime numbers are two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and seventeen. You add this up, it's fifty-eight. So the ninety degrees of our in the beginning that gave birth to the speed of light wants to tell us about a mother and father, and also wants to tell us about the first seven prime numbers. Why are these seven prime numbers important? Because if we square these seven prime numbers, two squared is four. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, 7 squared is 49, 11 squared is 121, 13 squared is 169, and 17 squared is 289. 4 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49 plus 121 plus 169 plus 289 is 6, 6, 6. So what we're going to do is actually take a look at that um, 90 degrees that we found gave us that number 58. 58 gave us in the beginning and speed of light. And then we added the first seven prime numbers. And we found that those first seven primes actually equal 58. In the beginning, speed of light, 90 degrees. 17 kind of becomes a limit here, if you will. Um, so in, in this birth of creation, we have seven prime numbers. 17 is the last number. Now, really what we're dealing with here is an arc. It's an arc, or biblically, it's an arc. Now, using our cipher, these both give you the numbers, because C and K have the same uh, designation. One, one, five, three, just as you read it left to right. And I have a video on this and I actually go over this in uh, volume two of the book, but um, you can check it out. It's uh, 153 in the Ark in Scripture. Um, this number 153 is pretty important. There's a lot of magical things you can actually do with this number. Why the, we see this Ark, which is, of course, a ship as well, um, 153. Why 153? Because if you add one through 17, this limit of our seven primes, it actually equals 153, and we're going to see why this number is important here. Um, Abraham. What are we dealing with here? We're dealing with the waters of creation, the two eternal opposites that merge, if you will, into the yin-yang symbol or whatever, and you, we're going to push over the equator here with the birth of the sun. And since all religions are basically dealing with the birth of the sun, we have the Abrahamic religions being born. The birth of the this this character, if you will, that represents the Abrahamic religions, um, Ju Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Of course, um, we do the numerology of Abraham, and it actually equals seventeen. So, adding one through seventeen tells us about the Ark, or the Ark, Ark of Creation that we're dealing with. That we're going to go out and give birth to that first son and give birth to you. So we're going to see why this number 153 is important. But first off, we're going to have to understand um, what's known as by Ari Schwalde Lubitsch, um, who is an alchemist, um, a theosophist, Egyptologist, um, what he called the primordial decision. So w when you say primordial, prime means first and ordeal, it means order. So it's the first order and then scission means cut. So we can kind of understand that, that the first thing was ordered and then it was cut or it was split with a you know, scissors. And in Egypt, you actually have a symbol like this. Oh, I'll draw that a little bit better. But it's basically an egg of creation and then there's a scissors here and, what's, and we're going to cut that egg of creation. So we, we deemed the egg of creation... Um, Everybody gets that here. We're talking about a scission, talking about a cutting. We deem that first egg of creation as the nun. It's the waters of the nun, the no thing. The egg of creation, the sphere of creation. Uh, circle encapsulates the most amount of space with the least amount of effort. Everything in existence and then the zero being no thing, the nun. And so what we're going to do 
is take that all or nothing. And what we're going to do is we're going to crack it. We're going to crack pi. It's basically what we're going to do. We're going to find the diameter. We're going to split this. We're going to cut it. And this was the creation of pi. And so the whole idea is that first egg of creation got split. And it got split by, well, a serpent, if you will, a virgin birth. You can even say that the serpent came, the pharaoh came forth between the thighs of the divine nine. That nine is a serpent. So it came forth, it split that egg, if you will. And this created pi. And this is why pi is an infinite number. Um, because it's representing the limit of our creation, the limit of the universe. That's why pi is infinite, because our universe is essentially infinite. It's as far out as we can possibly think and possibly go. So we had our none of creation. We cracked pi with a scissors. And what did we create? We created the, the vesica pi scission. The vesica, the vessel, that's what vesica means, <clears throat> of the pi scission. Pisces, creation of pi. That's what it's talking about. This is the womb of creation. This is akin to the, a mother's uh, regenerative member, her vagina. This gave birth to all of creation. Um, and we actually, when you draw, well, actually, we'll get into that in a second. Um, this vessel of the pie scission gave birth to all the creation. Now, why, why is this why is this important? Actually, I'm going to read. This is from Revelation 14:11. Um, if I can find it. Revelation 14, 11. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an 140 and 4,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. So, and lo, behold, I saw a lamb on Mount Sion. Here is the mount. This is Aries. This is the lamb. It's the ram constellation. And so this mount is the mount of the sun, moving up towards, through the equator, up and out of our, our uh, nuns or our waters of creation. This is the birth of the sun. This is the birth of the lamb who stood on the mount, and what he stood on the mount, Sion, where the vesica pisigen happened. And we see that right in, in Revelation uh, 14, 11. Now, we see this womb all over. There's Jesus Christ in the Vescopisis in the womb. And then this is, of course, the four, uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's, it's um, the eagle, bull, man, and lion. And this is, of course, the constellations Aquarius, uh, Scorpio, Aquarius, Leo, and Taurus. And we'll get into that. Here's a, here's a two, you can see almost like a man and a woman here in the womb of creation. What we saw with Capricorn and Pisces, the hands of Adam, the hands of Eve in the womb of creation giving birth. This is actually um, the Vescopisis. is the first thing you do in sacred geometry. You draw a Vesca Pisces, you draw a Trinity going up, and we're going to see that in just a second, and then the legs going down. And what you're actually creating then, of course, the as above, so below, Adam, Eve, positive and negative, up and down. This is the A. It's the alpha. It's the first thing in creation. This is one of the first things you do in sacred geometry. This is, um, this is from the UN. This is the big uh, painting or tapestry that's on, this big painting on the UN. Um, and you can even see, it might be hard to see, but you see that womb of creation in the center. You see a man and woman inside that womb. You see a child inside that womb. It's all talking about the same thing. This is an old picture. I think this is from like 2000 BC or something. Don't quote me. But um, basically a motherly or a supernal mother figure, and she's pulling open her vagina to give birth to all of creation. It's a virgin birth. She's leading nothing outside of herself to make this birth, and this is what it's symbolizing, and it's symbolizing geometry. This is um, yet another old artifact, and it's basically a mother mother of creation. It's a cosmic mother. Why is she so like obese, if you will? She's got enormous breasts and you know big stomach and big thighs. It's because all of creation is embedded in this. And she's about to give birth to all of creation. That's why she's so enormous. And you can even see the the pineal gland overhead there. 
pretty interesting. And so that's what that's symbolizing. It's the cosmic mother of all creation. And of course, we have you know Jesus inside that womb again. And then of course, we have the four, the four fixed signs of the zodiac once again. Jesus, the Son, the Son of God, giving birth, um, birth from the vesica or the vessel of the pie scission. And that's, that's what it's saying. And so all of this stuff has a geometric metaphor. Um, and we can understand the birth of our creation through simple numbers. So, Vesica Pisces. Vesica Pisces was known as Mary. I mean, it was known as Isis, Vesica Pisces, Isis. Um, notice what, what's happening here. We're going through the two fish, the Pisces. We can even see the two Pisces, and Pisces has the same I and E once again have the same designation, so it's, it's a designation of five. So this is spelled the same. It's the exact same numbers, Pisces and Pisces. The two fish is nothing more than a man and a woman. This is the symbol for Jesus, of course, and that's inside that womb of creation. Um, what does this have to do with Abraham being 17, the seventh prime number being 17, and adding 1 through 17 equaling 153. What does 153 have to do with any of this? We can actually see the geometry of creation in this number 153. We're going to take the Vesca Pisces again. If we measure this womb, this the center here, the womb of all creation, um, we make this 153. Its height will be 265. And 265 divided by 153 is nothing more than the square root of 3. This is the Holy Trinity. It's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Shiva, Brahman, and Vishnu. Um, it's, you know, it's the Holy Trinity. It's the, it's the 3 point, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, 2, blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. It's the birth of the Holy Trinity. Why is it rooted? Because it's rooted in the waters of creation. It went up over the over the um, the equator here, gave birth to the Son. The Son is the Trinity. I and the Father are one, Jesus said. And crossed the equator and rooted itself in the womb of creation. Gave birth to the three, but that three is rooted into that vesica, into that vessel of the pie scission. And that's what the 153 is, is telling us about. So I just want to take a look um, at this, this Vesica Pisces a little bit more. This is a womb of creation. We understand that, that this is the basically the vagina of the cosmic mother that, gave, that gives birth to all of creation. Um, and it's called the, the Vesica Pisces. And we can do the numerology of this. And Vesica equals 25, and Pisces equals 28. Now, um, what what happens? So basically, we're talking about the womb of creation. We're talking about the birth of the sun as it kicks up from Aquarius past the Pisces. And we're talking about birth of creation, birth of the sun, and the birth of you. So what happens when a mother gives birth? Her water breaks, correct? Waters of creation. Pisces is a water sign, by the way. Um, waters like that. So the two fish that came out of, basically, Aquarius is an air sign, but it's a water symbol. And so basically, what do we have? We have this uh, Aquarian mother who's pouring water forth. She's pouring it past the waters of the Pisces and the two fish that we see inside the womb. And then the waters of creation come out along with the sun. Interesting to note, um, we have, and we're going to get to the Vesca Pisces here in a second, but just to say this, we have, here's a, here's a water constellation, it's Pisces, and then we're going to see that Aries is a fire constellation. This is as above, so below is really what it is. Um, you know, wh why, why is this important? Because when, just, just listen, sometime, you know, if you're on your stove, Here's your stove. Let's say you're boiling a pot of water. Let water drip onto that stove when it's really hot. What are you going to hear? 
That's what you're going to hear. What is that? Well, that's a snake. That's a snake hissing. That's what's happening. Water is merging with fire. And that's exactly what we see on the equator. We have that mother giving birth, going past the water and giving birth to fire. What happens? It's a snake. And we're going to see this snake again. So, um, so that's just a, you know, just a way to kind of understand even further the idea of a snake getting in the way in the birth of creation. Not only is it a, is it a, a sperm, uh, we're also going to see it has a mathematical, a geometric medical as well. So mother gives birth, water breaks. 25 times 28, or vesica times Pisces equals seven, 700. Water, 41755. Four times one times seven times five times five is seven hundred. It's the mother's water breaking, giving birth to all of creation. Um, you might ask yourself too: Does this have something to do with the seven hundred club? Good question. So we know that this 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 motherly womb of creation, this Vesca Pisces, is a mother. Now, in the Bible, people have people have a problem with the Bible because the idea is that, well, Adam, God created Adam first and then created Eve second. But that's actually not true. The first thing was androgynous. It was neither male nor female. It had all the potential of the universe encased inside. What happened? It cracked. That two became two separate parts. But the two separate parts didn't actually become two separate parts. It became a mother. Came that womb of creation. So honestly, the first thing, if if you want to be almost even like technical about it, is a mother. The first thing is a mother. The first thing is a woman. Then that woman gave birth to Adam, and Adam gave birth to Eve, and Eve gave birth to Adam, and Adam gave birth to Eve. Why? Because odd even, odd even. From the zero of all creation came a mother, and that mother gave birth to a son. And that son, that son, or that son is one. One is an Adam number, or an odd number. Eve is an even number. Three is an odd number. Even, etc., etc., etc. So the first thing is actually a mother. We can see this geometrically drawn here as the mother. Let me draw this again here. So mother of creation, do the numerical equivalence, mother, and it equals 26. What is this 26 dealing with? What, what gave birth? But essentially our galaxy. We can actually draw, our galaxy is a toroidal structure. It's, a, it's basically a donut. It's a torus. And you can actually draw like the Vesca Pisces like this. And they're kind of like overlapping each other. And here's our center. And so when we look at the Milky Way galaxy, we're actually looking at the equator here of this toroidal structure. And a torus basically says what goes out, comes back in, out and in, out and in. These are the two opposing forces, centripetal and centrifugal forces. Um, it's, you know, going out to the center and coming back into the center. I think they're great terms. But these are the two forces that we see in our, the structure of our universe, or our uh, galaxy, excuse me. Mother equals 26. What What else equals 26? Lord, God. God equals 13. Lord equals 13. Equals 26. We live in a hologram. Gram means message. Hollow means whole. Means there's a whole message. Hologram is nothing more than saying the part is in the whole and the whole is in the part. That which is above is also below. And that which is below is also above. It's a hologram. Um... Scorpio is the constellation that actually points to the center of our galaxy. Center equals 26. Our galaxy is a torus. Torus equals 26. What's in the center of that, what's in the center that Scorpio points to that of the torus of our galaxy but a black hole? Black hole equals 26. This mother, motherly Vesca Pisces, Mother comes from the word mater. It's where we get the word matter. Matter equals 26. And then, of course, what's in that? 
what came forth from the mother or the ma the matter of the mater, but odd even. Odd even equals 26. And so it's the idea that our our mother is talking about our mother is the Lord God. It's the holograms, the Scorpios, the centers, the Taurus, the black hole, matter, odd even, all talking about the same thing. It's talking about that that womb of creation that is a mother. Now in well, this is known as Yahweh, and in Hebrew, um, this is He Vav He Yad, and this is five six five ten, and this is actually what um, our cipher encodes. It's called the Tetragrammaton. It's the holy name of God. The holy name of God equals twenty six, and so the idea that you know our Father in the sky, really, what it's saying is also our our Mother in the sky. Because our mother is our, our our Lord God. So um, I just want to focus on um, this one, this ninety degree arc again. Now we know that um, Pisces equal twenty eight, Aquarius equal thirty four, and and Capricorn equal twenty eight. We added these up; it's ninety, and this is a ninety degree arc. Once again, this leaves. Here's our 90 degrees. This leaves 270 degrees of a circle left. So this number 270 is, is pretty important. Remember, this is the cosmic womb. It's you and your mother's womb. It's the sun, all of manifestation inside this waters of none. It leaves 270 degrees of a circle. Why is this number 270 important? Because the human baby um, you know, the fetus spends 270 days inside the, the mother's womb. It's nine months. These are 30 degree arcs. 30 times nine is 270. Why is this also important? Because the letters above Jesus Christ, when he was crucified, of course, this is our son being crucified on the cross. And then the letters that were above that cross were I and RI. This, um, in the Hebrew cipher, once again, we're dealing with Hebrew here. Um, I was Yod, and it's 10. N is none, and this is 50. R is Resh, which is 200, and I is, I is Yod, which is 10. Um, why is this interesting? This equals 270. And so we have a direct correlation between the 270 degrees of a circle, 270 days inside the mother's womb. I and RI, why is this important? I means Yod. Nun means none. There's our waters of creation. Resh means head. And then I means Yod. And Yod means hand. And so these four characters are telling us about something. They're telling us about a hand, the waters of creation, a head, and a hand. Well, when the mother gives birth from that womb of creation, What's the first thing that comes out? Well, it's the head. It's the head that comes out. Um, and in the in the cosmological makeup of man, um, you can actually see this here. Um, Aries or the lamb is the head. And this is why um, this you know so this is why Rash is actually referring to the Lamb of God. Remember, once again, we had that Lamb on the Mount, Mount Sion, and it was written in their foreheads. This is that lamb that comes up. So INRI equaling 270 is talking about the 270 days of gestation in the mother's womb and what comes out. But a hand, a head, and a hand. Or a yod, a yod, and a resh. Where did this where did this two hands and this head come from? But the waters of creation, the nun, the nun. It came from the no thing. It came from the waters of creation, the birth, the womb. This is the nun. This is the hand. This is the hand and this is the head. The birth of the sun correlates to the birth of you. That's in our zodiac. First thing that comes up past Aries, the ram, the lamb, is on the mount, Mount Sion. The primordial scission is that, is that sun, is that child of God. And so that's what INRI stands for. Now, how else do we know this? I-N-R-I. 
5155. This is using the English cipher. Actually equals 16. Zodiac equals 16 as well. So we know that we're dealing with the zodiac. We're, birth of creation can be dealt with by the stars in our sky and correlate to the birth of you. So we're going to look at this 90 degree once again here. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, 28. This Aquarius, this, these, this water here, which is pouring forth, is the amniotic fluid in the mother's womb. We have the hands of Adam and hands of Eve. This is the XY and XX chromosome together inside that amniotic fluid that represented Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve equal 22. This is the 22 autosomes and the sex chromosome in the amniotic fluid of the mother of creation. Now, there. Now we understood that when the um, the sperm went and cracked the 23 chromosomes of that egg. Sorry. The the mother and the father joined. The two eternal opposites came into one, and then it started cracking. When this when this cracks, it actually so basically we take the waters of creation. We're going to crack pi. What what happens is the the process of mitosis, and it's a doubling pattern. And so basically, um, one egg doubles to become two, two become four, four become eight, etc., etc., etc. And eventually, this after these nine long months in this womb, it creates the temple of the human being. And this is called mitosis, and we can see Isis in that mitosis. Now, um, why is this important? Well, the, the Hermopolitan mystery is I'm the one that becomes the two, that becomes the four, that becomes the eight, that becomes one again. So Hermes is asking about the mystery of all being, and he's giving you a clue. He's, it's a riddle. It's I'm the one that becomes the two, that becomes the four, that becomes eight, becomes one again. What is he talking about? He's talking about the, the breaking, the doubling pattern in mitosis, in my Isis, if you will, the birth of me, the birth of sun, the birth of everything from that cosmic mother. Um, and so this follows a doubling pattern. Now this doubling pattern is is when the two opposites come together, the mother and the father, the Adam and Eve, the she, the Shakti, the yin and the yang, it's coming together and it's doubling. So a human being actually has 46 chromosomes. It's doubled of that 23 because you have 23 from the mother and 23 from the father. What are we dealing with here? We're dealing with um, 90 degrees of our of creation. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces equals 90. What is 90? It's a right angle. We do the numerology for right angle, and it wants to tell you about the 46 chromosomes in that egg of creation. That's what it's telling you about. Right angle equals 46. Where are we? Where, where, where was Adam and Eve? Well, they were in the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. You can do this yourself. Pause it. Garden of Eden equals 46. What is this? This is the sacred geometrical seed of life. Equals 46. The seed of life even kind of mimics the breaking up of mitosis, the doubling pattern which is interesting. You can see that. And I have that in my first volume. But what uh, this is, um, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Oops. Cancer equals 28, and Capricorn we know equals 20. Cancer equals 18, Capricorn equals 28. Together, this equals 4 to 6. So that December 25th, we're going to march up, we're going to cross the equator, we're going to go all the way up and get to the Tropic of Cancer. And what did we do when we just did that? If you started down here, 
and you traversed as the sun through the waters of creation, across the equator, went all the way up to that 69 of Cancer that we saw in the cardinal fixed immutable and we saw in the sign of Cancer, what did we do there? We just cracked pie. We went from all the way down here and we went all the way up here and we went half a circle. And that's exactly what happened when we did that. We cracked pie. We Mother and father came together and cracked and started the process of mitosis, the isis that is in the geometry of the Vesca Pisces. What else equals 46? Just a, a few interesting notes. King Arthur equals 26. Prime Meridian equals 26. Equilibrium equals, uh, excuse me, what equals 46? King Arthur, Equilibrium, Prime Meridian equals 46. The Big Apple equals 46. What did Adam and Eve bite? They took the, from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they took an apple. The big apple equals 46. The Holy Bible equals 46. Interesting to note about the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. Now, um, on most Bibles, let's see if I can grab this here, sorry. The Holy Bible. Notice it doesn't say the. It just says Holy Bible. Here's a Masonic edition. It just says Holy Bible. It doesn't say the Holy Bible, does it? Why would it not say the Holy Bible? When you address something, you say the, correct? You don't say Holy Bible. You say this is the Holy Bible. When you do the numerology for the Holy Bible, um, it's 765 6222 It actually equals 46. Chromosomes. It's the number of chromosomes in human genetics. Right angle, the Garden of Eden wanted to tell us about, seed of life, cancer, Capricorn. Interesting, when you take the away from Holy Bible, Holy Bible now equals 28. Holy Bible equals 28. The Holy Bible equals 46. What are they talking about here? They're talking about the alpha, the first thing, is 46 chromosomes, and the omega. Forty-six chromosomes that created the human being, the alpha and the omega, the last thing, which is the twenty-eight phalanges of your hands. That's in the Holy Bible. And so all of this is based on, um, well, all the story of creation we can even see is based on the number of chromosomes in the human being. And really, what it does is kind of uh, syncretizes the stars in our sky, human genetics, the the words we work with the numbers attached to those words, and then the geometry of everything. It's really what it's dealing with. Um, and so I just want to mention one more thing here. We're dealing with once again, here's our nun, our womb, our waters of creation, and then we're bursting forth of that sun. Um, in the procession of the equinoxes, it's where the stars move in a retrograde motion one degree every 72 years. 72 uh, times 360 degrees of a circle actually equals 25,920. This gives a designation for each 12 ages of the zodiac. And each age has 21,600 years. So there's 21,600 years here. 21,600. Ooh. 21. Uh, excuse me, 2,160. I'm sorry I'm saying this wrong. 2,160, 2,160. This is the number of um, number of years in one age, the procession of the equinoxes. Now this is the birth of the sun. So the first, this would be the first age. The sun would designate the first age because this is the birth of creation. And we know this is 2,160. Horus, which is the Egyptian sun god, 6 times 2 times 5 times 6 times 6 is 2,160. Jesus was called Yeshua. Multiply this, it's 2,160. So our sun gods here are Yeshua, or our Horus, actually encode um, the number of, a number of years in one age of the procession of the equinoxes. Surely not a coincidence. 
So we're going to do um, just one more thing and then we're going to do a review and then that'll be it for this video. Um, what we're going to do is actually, once again, here's that waters of creation. We're going to burst forth from that equator and we're going to look at this sign of Aries because Aries is nothing more than a rise or it's when a king wants a sire. He wants a new child. He wants a new sun god to to um, to replace him on the throne. The throne is also it's the center. It's the access point of the entire uh, twelve ages of the zodiac. The throne is nothing more than recognizing that you know the one, the one God, the monotheistic principles of everything, because everything had to come from that first egg of creation. That first egg of creation is zero. It's all or nothing. It's it's whole. It's holy. Um, so the idea of Abraham basically brought on the monotheistic principles of spirituality. He was the one, he was the character that was known to bring that idea forth. Now, the idea of monotheism is not that it's the idea, it's not the God of the Jews or the Christians or the Muslims, etc., etc., etc. All these are garments. All these are expressions of the one God, one, the mono, monotheism. And that's what it's saying. And all of these gods are talking about the same thing. Or all of these religions are talking about the same, the one source of everything. We can see this in the throne. The one. This is the throne. So what we're going to do is actually focus on Aries here. When we arise, the sire arises through Aries. This is the, um, well, in the Bible it says, and the, the night and the day were the first. Or, well, you know, let's just read it here. Um, and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. The darkness he called night, this is the darkness, the nun, the waters of creation, he called this night. And that night wants to tell us about the mother. Mother. And then the day. This is the day. This is where the arise the sun rises, it's the day, the sunrise, day in our cipher, let's do this here, we're talking about the ram here, oops, 412 equals 7, we're talking about the ram, 511 equals 7, what are we also talking about, we're talking about that supernal mother figure, that cosmic mother gave birth to Adam, we know Adam equals 7 as well. Seven days of creation, seven seven colors in the rainbow. So light, as far as we see it in uh, through our eyes, has the sevenfold vibration. We see this in the chakras, etc., etc., etc. Seven is a very holy number, and we know that seven actually encodes pi because twenty-two divided by seven is pi. Twenty-two. Why is this important? Because Aries. Same number is actually backwards, but it was 22. And so this 7 equals 22, we see, is the ram, it's the atom, it's the birth of the day, is in um, 7 equals 22, and Aries equals 22. Um, so basically we're dealing with the sunrise here. What, what, what is the sunrise? Well, the sun rises on the horizon. Horizon equals 22. There's seven letters in horizon. 22 divided by 7 is pi. This was the morning. Morning equals 22 and has seven letters. 22 divided by 7 is pi. This was a miracle. It was a miracle birth. It was the birth of the, from a virgin. It was a virgin birth. It was a miracle. Miracle equals 22 and has seven letters. 22 divided by 7 is pi. Of course, this comes from the circle the egg of all creation. How do you create a circle? You create it with a compass. Compass equals 22. Seven letters. 22 divided by 7 is pi. Um, this god was also known as Emmanuel, which is basically saying, a man, you are El. You are God. Emmanuel equals 22. Uh, cross. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the cross of Christ. Cross equals 22. Isis. This is the Vesica Pisces. This is the birth of the Aries, or the rising of the sun through the constellation Pisces to create the Vesica Pisces. And this is Isis. Isis, the mother of all creation, equals 22. Um, Tarot equals 22. Wheel 
wheel in the sky that is the zodiac. Wheel equals 22. Wisdom equals 22 is the birth of wisdom. And then, of course, we have the waters breaking from the Isis to create the horizon, the, the morning, the miracle, etc., etc. Water equals 22. So all of these things, water, wisdom, wheel, tarot, Isis, cross, Emmanuel, compass, miracle, morning, horizon, all equal the 22 of Aries. 7 equals 22. That's what we see again, again, and again. Seven days of creation. It's all talking about that same thing. So why why is 22 extra important? Hopefully everybody gets that. Um, 22. We do the numerical equivalence of 22. 7451727472. This equals 39. Why, why is 39 important? Well, um, Christian. Being a Christian is nothing more than saying, Christ, I am. I am Christ. That's what it's saying. The kingdom of God resides in you. That's what it's saying. Christian equals 39. Freemasonry equals 39. Stargate. That's what we're passing through is the Stargate. Stargate equals 39. Golden Rule equals 39. Root octave equals 39. Um, and this is the most important one. And this is the one we're going to focus on here for just a second. And this is sine cosine equals 39. Christian, Freemasonry, Stargate, Golden Rule, Root octave, sine cosine equals 39. Sine cosine is a mathematical idea of your xy coordinates, you have a circle of all creation. And what comes forth? What does the sine wave look like? The sun and the moon use a sine wave to course through our sky. Um, this is how we can map it. Sine wave looks like this. Well, what is that? That's a serpent. That's the serpent that broke the egg of creation. This is what we see in Genesis. We see this on the serpent mound. We see this motif all over, you know. Um, so the idea of the serpent, well, what what did the serpent do? It got between Adam and Eve, and it created original sin. Original sin is nothing more than the origins of sign. It's the idea of snaking out of your center. It's going away from your center. And what we want to do is not sin or sign and get back to our centers. And so, and this is, you know, so original sine and cosine. And this is basically the idea that Adam and Eve, they sinned and co-sinned with, e with each other. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the, God blamed Adam. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. Whose fault was it really? Well, it's it's just a it's just a motif of a mathematical understanding of creation, what happened in creation, and then how that sun and that moon course through our sky. So sine and cosine equal thirty nine. What we looked at Aries, we looked at horizon, morning, miracle, Emmanuel, cross, Isis, Tarot, compass, wheel, wisdom, water, seven. All of these things equal twenty two. We did the numerical equivalents for twenty two. It told us about thirty nine. Thirty nine wanted to tell us about Christian, Freemasonry, Stargate, Golden Rule, Root Octave, Sine, Cosine. That told us about the original sin. Why is this important? Because there's thirty nine books in the Old Testament. Where do we get original sin? In the Old Testament. So what we're going to do is do a quick review here. Um, we looked at the astrological birth of creation. Basically what we did is we correlated the birth of you to the 12 ages of the zodiac, to the birth of creation, and to the birth of the sun on December 25th. And we correlated all these things basically through human genetics. Um, we looked at the waters of creation, how the nun or the waters of creation gave birth to the lotus and the flower, uh, gave birth to heaven and earth. We, we showed how the Pharaoh came forth between the thighs of the Divine Nine. This 54 and 45 we found in the numerology of heaven and earth. Heaven equals 23, earth equals 24. 
We found that we did the numerology for the words 23, 24. It actually equals 54 and 45. We found this 23 and 24 in Lotus Flower, Emerald Tablet, Buddha Gotama, Bohemian Grove, Heaven, Earth. We found this time and time again. Um, and then we also saw that the radius of the Earth is actually um, in between Heaven and Earth. 46 plus 47 plus 48 plus 49 plus 50 plus 51 plus 52 plus 53 equals 396. We times that by our 10 fingers. It gave us the radius of the earth. We looked at the zodiac, all 12 ages of the zodiac. We found that we added up all the ages. It equals 315. We found 315 on a clock. We did the numerology of 315. It told us about 63. 63, we found that the inspector general, which is 3, 3, equaled 63, and letters and numbers equaled 63. We did the decimal parity equivalent broke down each number to its 1 through 9, and we found that equaled 63 as well. We looked at the three phases of astrology, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. We correlated that to the negredo, albedo, and rubedo of alchemy, and we also found that the 69 in cancer, 69, 69. We went to that 315 of our zodiac, due east, where the sun rises, and we found that we can travel 169 miles every one degree that we traverse from our equatorial circumference up to that cancer. We looked at the solar system. We did the numerical equivalents for all twelve, or all uh, ten, nine planets and sun of our solar system. We added this up equals 234. We mirrored 234. We found 432. We found that the the diameter or the radius of the sun is 432,000 miles. 234 plus 432 is 666. We looked up in St. John's Revelation. We found St. John's Revelation, the verse to be 1318. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of man, and his number is 666. We multiplied 13 times 18, we found 234. We went to the four alchemical elements. We found earth, air, water, fire in the 12 ages of our zodiac. We added up 1 through 12, it gave us 78. We added up the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire, it equaled 78. We looked, we found the four elements on our fingers. We found the 12 ages of the zodiac on our fingers. We also found that 1.618, when you do the numerology for it, equals 78. We also saw that there were 78 cards in a tarot deck. We went to that birth, that womb, that 90 degrees of creation. We looked at Adam as Capricorn, or Adam and Eve, by uh, the, the 28 phalanges of our hands, represented by Capricorn. Adam, 28 phalanges of our hands, represented by Eve. We saw that the Aquarius, the waters of creation, the amniotic fluid, we looked at 34. 34 went to, um, correlated to astrology equaling 34, with this, this symbol of water here representing the amniotic fluids. We actually, and then we actually multiplied Aquarius. 1 times 4 times 6 times 1 times 5 times 5 times 6 times 6 equals 21,600. We saw that there's 21,600 arc minutes at the equatorial circumference of the Earth, and that the human being takes 21,600 breaths in a single day. We also added the Fibonacci numbers 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. We added those up and it equaled 88 and there are 88 constellations in our northern and southern hemisphere and that there are 88 keys on the piano and 88 divided by the 28 phalanges of your hands equals 3.142. It's pi. We took the 90 degrees of our arc, our womb of creation, and we saw that uh, we had Adam and Eve in there once again. We had the Aquarius, once again, the waters, the amniotic fluid of creation, and we noticed that this was 90 degrees. We did the numerology of 90 degrees. It wanted to tell us about 58. In the beginning, it wanted to tell us about 58. Speed of light wanted to tell us about 58. We did the numerology for 58. It wanted to tell us about a mother and a father, a yin and a yang, a sheep and a shaki, an Adam and Eve, a positive and negative inside the womb of creation. We added the first seven prime numbers together and it equaled 58. We squared those prime numbers and it equaled 6, 6, 6. We took a look at those first seven primes again, and we noticed that they ended on 17. Or we noticed 17 was sort of a limit. We did the numerology for Abraham, and it equaled 17. This is the birth of the Abrahamic religions. We added 1 through 17, and we found 153, a very, very important number seen in um, Saint jo uh, the book of, uh, book of John. Looked at this arc of creation, this 90 degrees. We spelled out arc. Mathematically, or as it is in the Bible, we found the numbers 153, 153. We went to Revelation 14, 1, and it, tell us, it told us about Mount Sion and the land that stood on the mount and, that, um, and the, the power in their foreheads, if you will. We realized that that was the birth of Aries and the birth of the Trinity through the Vesica Pisces, through the primordial scission of our Vesica Pi scission or the Pi scission on Mount Sion. And we found the 153. We 
measure the width of the womb. Its height will be 265. 265 divided by 153 is the square root of 3, and that is the birth of our trinity, our trinity that rose up and rooted itself into the waters of creation. We also took a look at INRI. We found that in Hebrew, this talked about two hands and a head that burst forth from the waters of creation from the nun. And it also told us about the 270 days of gestation in your mother's womb. We looked further at that Vesica Pisces. We did the numerology for Vesica and Pisces. We multiplied and found 700. And we found that this was the waters bursting forth. This is the waters breaking of your mother's womb. We multiplied water and it told us about the 700 as well. Of course, this womb of creation we found out was a mother. And we did the numerology for mother and we know that it equaled 26. And we found out that Lord God, hologram, Scorpio, center, Taurus, matter, black hole, odd, even, all equal 26. And the holy name of the father, the tetragrammaton, Yahweh, in the Hebrew cipher, equal 26 as well. And of course, we have 26 letters of our English alphabet. And then we also went and saw that there was a, the birth of the day, which was a ram, which was Adam, which was Aries. Aries wanted to tell us about the horizon, the miracle, the morning, the Emmanuel, cross, Isis, tarot, compass, wheel, wisdom, water. It wanted to tell us about that holy seven. And then that holy 22, 7 equals 22, Aries equals 22, it equaled 39. 39 wanted to tell us about Christian, Freemasonry, Stargate, Golden Rule, Root Octave, Sine, Cosine, and the number of books in the Old Testament. Now, when the, when the sun was born, it was born in a fire sign. Here's our waters of creation. The sun was born and it was born in a fire sign. Fire equals um, 21. And this is also the birth of the pyramid. And this is 21 as well. And pyramid actually means pyro, which is fire, and then mitos, which I think means place of. So it's basically the idea of the place of the fire. And so this, this pyramid and this fire equals 21. Now, um, when the sun crossed the equator, once again, this was the birth of heaven and earth. And so we have our sun, and then we have earth that revolves around the sun. This is the birth of all creation. It's the birth of the sun, but it's also the birth of you. And you are a child. And we do the numerology for child, and it wants to tell us about 36524. And there are 365.24 days in a solar year. So the birth of the sun, the birth of you, the birth of all creation are recognized in the birth of any child that's ever been born. It's a reflection of all creation. Now, this God is called, God has often been called El. Why would God be called L? This equals seven. We know the power of seven. We just went over that. But what's more important is that if you were gonna geometrically show the name of God, L, phonetically L, that would be the letter L in our alphabet. L is nothing more than 90 degrees or a right angle. or 90 degrees. We know 90 degrees. We know right angle equals 46, 90 degrees equals 58, and 90 represents the um, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, because these three things equal 90. So apparently God is a right angle. This is also why you shake with your right hand. So why would God be called L? Well, that's easy to see. That's why God is called L. My name is Marty Leeds. You can get me at martyleeds33.com or www.schooloftheholiescience.org. I've got two books for sale right now, one called Pi the Great Work and one called Pi in the English Alphabet, Volume 1. And uh, Volume 2 should be released uh, hopefully this month or not early next month. Thank you very much.